Welcome back to Natural Language Processing. Uh, we're going to continue now with the next topic in parsing, uh, specifically uh, something that is called prepositional phrase attachment. Let me remind you what the pen tree bank representation of a sentence looks like. This is the famous sentence number one of the pen tree bank. Uh, it represents the sentence, uh, Pierre Vinken, uh, 61 years old, will join the board as a non-executive director November 29th. As you can see, uh, the Lisp type structure represents the syntactic uh, structure of the sentence. We have a noun phrase that is marked as a subject, that is namely uh, Pierre Vinken, 61 years old. And then we have a verb phrase that consists of will join the board as a non-executive director November 29th. How many prepositional phrases do we have in this uh, sentence? Well, one obvious one is as a non-executive director. The word as is a preposition. In the pantry bank tag set, prepositions are marked with the code IN. So the question here is, does the preposition as a non-executive director modify board or does it modify join? In general, prepositional phrases can modify either the noun that is closest to them or the verb before that noun. The second sentence of the pen tree bank is, Mr. Vinken is chairman of Elsevier NV, comma, the Dutch publishing group. So the, noun, the prepositional phrase here is of Elsevier NV. The preposition is of. So where does this one attach? Does it attach to the nearest noun, specifically chairman, or does it attach to is? Well, prepositional phrase attachment is the problem of automatically figuring out this attachment. So there are two types of prepositional phrase attachment. Uh, the first kind is called high attachment uh, or verbal attachment. That's when uh, the prepositional phrase as director attaches to the nearest verb, in this case, join. And the second example is low attachment or nominal attachment. In this example, of Elsevier modifies chairman. What does it mean to modify chairman? It just means that the chairman is associated with Elsevier. The verb is is not associated with Elsevier. Just like in the first example, as director is the way in which the person joined the board. It is not a modification of board. Let's now look at the phrase structure of a sentence that includes a prepositional phrase. Uh, Jane caught the butterfly with the net. As you can see, with the net is a prepositional phrase that in this case modifies the verb caught. It does not modify butterfly. It, it essentially denotes the way in which the butterfly was caught. If for any reason the butterfly was carrying the net, we would have the prepositional phrase with the net be listed under the noun phrase uh, for butterfly. Let's look at some examples of prepositional phrase attachment in real uh, life. The first example is, Lucy's plane leaves Detroit on Monday. Is this high or low attachment? Well, it doesn't, on Monday it doesn't modify Detroit, it modifies leaves, so that is high attachment. The second example, Jenna met Mike at the concert. Is this high or low? Well, it is high again because at the concert modifies the verb meet. It doesn't modify Mike. And the third example, this painting must cost millions of dollars. In this case, of dollars modifies millions rather than cost. So we have low attachment. So now I have a question for you. In each of the following six examples, can you tell me if we have a case of high attachment or low attachment? I'm going to read the first two and you can read the rest on your own. Alicia ate spaghetti from Italy. Alicia ate spaghetti with meatballs. Can you think of the six attachments? And I'll give you the answers on the next slide. Okay, so the question was, uh, can you classify the six sentences into high and low attachment? Well, the answers are in front of you. The first one is Alicia ate spaghetti from Italy. This is a low attachment because uh, from Italy modifies spaghetti. Alicia ate spaghetti with meatballs, again, most likely this is low attachment because meatballs modifies spaghetti. And then we have four instances of high attachment. Alicia ate spaghetti with a fork. Even though the preposition is the same as in the previous example, we have an instance of high attachment because with a fork modifies the verb ate. The next example is probably a little funny. Alicia ate spaghetti with Justin. We definitely want 
with Justin to modify ate, which is the verb, and not spaghetti, in which case Alicia would have eaten Justin along with the spaghetti. Uh, the fifth example, Alicia ate spaghetti with delight. We again have an instance of high attachment, so with delight modifies the verb ate. And finally, Alicia ate spaghetti on Friday. We have an instance of high attachment because on Friday modifies Alicia. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was reading the newspaper and I came across an actual headline that includes a very ambiguous uh, prepositional phrase. Uh, police shoot man with box cutters. This is a really funny example because uh, it's really difficult to shoot a man uh, using a box cutter. Box cutters are typically not used to shoot people. So the interpretation here was fairly simple uh, for human. It was clear that it was the man who was carrying the box cutters, not uh, the police using the box cutters to shoot the man with. So uh, in this example, uh, we have two possible syntactic interpretations of the sentence. The first one is the correct one. In that one, uh, with box cutters uh, modifies the man. So in that sense, the man was carrying the box cutters. The second example, which I have deliberately marked with a question mark on the left, which indicates that this is a questionable interpretation of the sentence, we have with box cutters at the same level as uh, the verb shoot which is incorrect. And you can see that the two parse trees look very different. The one on the left has with box cutter as part of the noun phrase, man, and the one on the right, the incorrect one, has with box cutters at the same level as shoot. Okay, so the prepositional phrase attachment is a very interesting problem in natural language processing because first, it is important for parsing uh, sentences syntactically, and second, because it's a very nice introduction to the problem of binary classification. So I'm going to use this opportunity to introduce binary classification on this problem. So how do we formulate this problem as a binary classification problem? Well, it's fairly straightforward. We have a set of instances, each of which consists of an input and an output. The input is a prepositional phrase and possibly the surrounding context around it, the rest of the sentence. And the output is just a binary label. Uh, the convention is to use zero for high attachment and one for low attachment. Now in practice, we don't look at the context surrounding the prepositional phrase. In fact, we don't look at the prepositional phrase in its entirety either. Uh, in practice, the context only consists of four words, the preposition itself, the verb before the preposition, the noun before the preposition, and the noun after the preposition. So for example, the sentence from the Pen Tree Bank, about Pierre Vinkin joining the board as a non-executive director, this uh, sentence will be only represented as the four tuple join board as director. Why do you think we only keep those four words as the representation of the instance and ignore everything else? Think about it. I'll show you the answer on the next slide. So the question was, uh, why do we only represent uh, a prepositional phrase instance by the four features, uh, preposition, noun one, noun two, and verb? Well, there are two reasons. The first one is that we don't really need the rest of the context. Most of the information, in fact, almost all of it needed to classify a prepositional phrase as either high or low attachment turns out to be contained in those four features. And the second reason is that uh, only using consistent tuples of four features allows us to have a more consistent uh, machine learning approach. So let's look at some sample tuples from the Pen3 bank. Uh, this table shows you uh, about 10 examples. The first column indicates the sentence from which those prepositional phrases were extracted. And then you have uh, for each instance uh, four features, the verb, the first noun, the preposition, and the second noun. And the last column shows you if that particular tuple should be classified as high attachment or low attachment. And remind you, I want to remind you that high attachment is verb and low attachment is noun. So let's look at an example here. Uh, led team of researchers. Of researchers modifies team. It doesn't modify led. Therefore, we're going to label it as a noun attachment. So it turns out that the literature in linguistics, and in particular in psycholinguistics, uh, has uh, disagreement on 
how humans do attachment in sentences. There is one theory by Kimbo that favors the so-called right association rule. It says that given a new phrase and two choices of attachment, people tend to attach the new phrase to the most recent, to the rightmost uh, portion of the sentence. So this uh, theory favors low attachment. However, there's an alternative interpretation uh, called the minimal attachment principle by Fraser. Uh, that favors an attachment that results in the syntactic tree of the sentence having fewer additional syntactic nodes. So therefore, uh, favoring high attachment. If you remember in the previous slide, uh, the diagram that corresponds to high attachment had fewer internal nodes compared to the one that has low attachment. Well, in practice, it turns out that none of those uh, theories is correct. Uh, there are instances of both high and low attachment in uh, real occurring uh, human text. Let's look now at the data set that is used in most of the research on prepositional phrase attachment. I'm going to refer to this data set as RRR1994, where the three R's correspond to the initials of the three researchers who first published it. This data set includes about 28,000 prepositional phrases extracted from the Pantry Bank. They are divided into three groups, 20,000 used for training and the rest used for testing. Uh, the representation used in this data set only consists of the four features in the table, the verb, the two nouns, and the preposition. So for example, the sentence that uh, is represented as bring attention to problem is actually the sentence Although preliminary findings were reported more than a year ago, the latest results appear in today's New England Journal of Medicine, a forum likely to bring new attention to the problem. It should be pretty obvious that most of the sentence is not relevant to the decision of prepositional phrase attachment, uh, which is in this case uh, how to classify the prepositional phrase to the problem. So uh, we're going to introduce now supervised learning as a method for dealing with a prepositional phrase attachment. And specifically, I want to focus on how to evaluate supervised learning. So here's how it works. We take a set of instances, for example, the 20,000 from the RRR data set. We manually label it. So we ask human evaluators to read each of those instances and label each of them as either high or low attachment. Then we split the labeled data into a training and a testing set. Then we look at the training data to find patterns, something that we can encode as rules to use uh, automatically to label the rest of the data. We apply then these patterns to the testing set and we evaluate the accuracy of this algorithm using a metric called, surprisingly enough, accuracy. Uh, accuracy is the percentage of correct labels that the algorithm has assigned on the testing data. So uh, if the correct label for a certain tuple is V and the system labels it as V, we score a point. We also score a point if the correct label is N and we label it as N. The other two cases when the label is V and we mislabel it as N and vice versa, uh, we actually don't score any points. So a typical performance uh, using this accuracy metric would be, let's say, 80%. If the two classes are equally likely and we randomly guess, we would get an average of 50% accuracy. So it is very important when you come up with a new algorithm for binary classification problem to be able to compare it using a reasonable evaluation metric such as accuracy uh, with a simple baseline method. So what is the simplest baseline method in this example? Can you think about it? Well, the simplest supervised baseline method is to find the most common class or label in the training data, uh, assuming that one of them is more frequent, which is almost always going to be the case unless there is a perfectly equal split. Then we're going to use this more common label to, and assign it to all the instances of the testing data set. In a few minutes, we're going to look at different algorithms and compare them with this baseline. 